Hello and welcome. Today we'll be adding Bluetooth to an iPod Shuffle first gen. Let's start by disassembling it. Now just by looking at it, it's not really clear how this thing comes apart. First, we got to remove the on-off switch by sliding it into the off position, then prying it from the bottom right corner. As you can see, it just unclips like this. Although that doesn't reveal anything else, it's just necessary to remove so we can slide the internals out. To get inside, we have to remove the USB connector at the bottom here, and that's held in with some pretty strong glue. I like to take my box cutter knife and slowly pry it up bit by bit. You have to be very gentle as you could easily crack the plastic. I work my way across both the top and the bottom. As you pry around in there, you'll feel it start to dislodge and the glue will make a bit of a cracking sound as it starts to break off. Then I grab my tweezers and shove them in the side a little bit to get better leverage and pry up to finally remove the USB connector. You gotta be careful when removing it as it's connected to a flex cable that attaches to the PCB and that's probably the most fragile thing on this iPod. To slide the internals out, we need to push them down through the headphone jack. So find something that'll fit inside there and push it through. I ended up using my tweezers. But obviously be careful not to break it. There was quite a bit of resistance pushing mine out as the battery had started to expand, which is pretty common on these old iPods. Now carefully unpeel the USB connector flex from the battery and remove it from the logic board. The logic board assembly is held together with a bit of tape, which we'll need to peel up on the sides. However, we can't fully remove it as it's also holding in the domes for the buttons. So what I like to do is just remove it from the sides. I peel it up and cut off the flaps with the scissors. Now we can remove the piece of plastic that's holding everything in place. As you can see, the logic board has two pieces to it. They're both held together with one of those Lego style connectors. So the bottom side will just unclip like this and now everything can come apart. This is the Bluetooth board we'll be using for the mod. It's the same one I've used in all my previous Bluetooth mods. It's called the KCX underscore BT underscore emitter. Now you might be wondering how we're going to fit this in. Unfortunately, the only place we can put it is where the battery goes. So we'll have to use a smaller battery in order for this to work. Fortunately, the iPod Shuffle second gen battery was the perfect size, so we'll use that instead. Although it is about half the capacity of the original Shuffle first gen battery. From what I can find online, the original was 250 milliamp hours, and the replacement Shuffle second gen batteries are 120. The Bluetooth board will also consume more power as well, so the battery life won't be anywhere near as good as it was when this thing was new. Now over to the soldering iron to install it. First we'll have to wire up the Bluetooth board. We'll need three wires for the headphone jack. One for left audio, one for right audio, and one for ground. And a positive and negative wire to go to the battery. I stripped the ends off then put a bit of solder on each wire. Then I soldered the holes on the Bluetooth board and slotted them in one by one. I then cut the bottoms off the leads and filed them down flush. I'm going to mount this on top of the battery so I don't want them to puncture it. Now to solder up all the leads to the headphone jack. I decided to run each of the wires through the middle of the two circuit boards and have them come up through the tiny gap behind the headphone jack. I don't think there would have been enough clearance to run them up the top. They would have interfered with the battery indicator button. It was pretty tight slotting them through but they did fit. I then stripped off the ends of each wire and tinned them. Then I applied some flux and extra solder to all of the pads. Here's a picture of the pin out of the headphone jack if you want to try this mod yourself. Now just soldering them in. I pulled them tight so they'd take up the least amount of space possible. If I kept them long like that, it wouldn't be able to slide back into the plastic housing. I also realized they might interfere with the on-off switch, so I test fitted that as well. I had to reposition them a bit, but it did end up fitting. Now to wire the positive and negative leads up to the battery. I had to take off the wires that were already on there and twist them around each other in order to get them to stay together. I hooked them up to the connection points on the battery BMS, but I guess I could have also wired them to the other end that connects to the board. I just thought it'd be a bit cleaner this way. I'm also going to be adding a switch onto the positive lead so we'll be able to turn the Bluetooth board off when we're not using it, otherwise it'll just drain the battery flat. It needs to be wired onto the positive lead as if you wire it to the negative, the board will still stay powered through the negative on the headphone jack. Then I soldered the positive and negative wires from the battery onto the logic board. Now to reassemble everything back into the plastic frame. I'm going to add the switch on top of the USB connector. I'll mount it so it's recessed into the housing and won't interfere with anything. I use the box cutter to remove a bit of plastic where it needs to go, then I super glued the switch into place. The switch I used was a lock switch from an iPod Classic 5th Gen. I fired down the plastic nubs on the back to make it sit flush. Then I wired up the two positive leads and now we're done with the soldering. I reinstalled the USB connector flex back into its socket and gave everything a test to make sure it was working properly. At first I was getting no music and a terrible screeching noise coming from the Bluetooth earphones. It took me ages to figure out what it was. None of the components ended up being faulty but I decided to try running the negative audio wire off of the negative lead on the battery instead and that ended up fixing it. It's always a good idea to test these things before reassembling them, otherwise I would have wasted a bunch of time taking it apart again. Before I put everything back in I had to cut a hole for the pair button on the Bluetooth board. I marked out exactly where it would go with a permanent marker and carved out a hole with the scissors. Although I kind of regret doing it this way to be honest. It looks pretty ugly and it's right in the middle of the iPod text. If I did this again I'd probably try to remount another button beside the USB connector as it looks like there'd be enough space for it there. I then reinserted everything into the housing and glued the USB connector back into place.
Make sure to use a more rubbery drying glue like B7000 if you're ever going to take one of these apart. If you were to use a super glue, there's not a chance you can remove that piece again without destroying the housing. I also had to remove a small amount of plastic from the cap to get it to fit back on as the power switch was preventing it from fully closing. I then left the iPod to fully charge for a couple of hours and now it's ready to be used. To power Bluetooth earphones, first switch on the iPod and the Bluetooth board. Then put our earphones into pair mode and press the pair button. It should connect after around 10 seconds and there we go. I hadn't actually restored this yet so this is all the previous owner's music. In one of my TikToks I said this iPod kind of looks like an Apple TV remote. Well now it feels like one too that I'm wirelessly controlling my music through it. If you're wondering about these earphones, this is the KZ AZ09 Bluetooth adapter kit which will allow you to convert all your KZ earphones to wireless. They're hooked up to my ZSN Pros. I've had a few people ask me about these in my previous videos, so I'll have a link to buy those in the description, as well as links to buy the Bluetooth board and other parts I use here if you want to give this mod a try for yourself. If you're interested in getting a Bluetooth iPod, check out my website. I'm selling these Bluetooth upgrade kits for the classic 5th, 6th and 7th gens. You can also send in your iPod Classic for a Bluetooth conversion if you'd like as well. If you liked the video, hit the like and subscribe, and if you want to see how to add Bluetooth to an iPod Classic or Mini, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.